thank you. I thank God every time I'm here and ask that he speaks through me today so I can speak to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever received an invitation to a party you really did not want to go to? <laughs> what did you do about that? How that you did not mistreat, abuse, and murder the mailman? Or have you ever invited people to your party who did not attend? You cleaned, you cooked, you decorated. The table was set, the candles were lit, the music was playing. Everything was ready, but some guests didn't come. Did it make you so angry that you killed them and burned down their houses? <laughs> Probably not. But that's what happens in this parable. The, this parable of the king's son's wedding is so outrageous and so shocking. To hear this parable and conclude that God is an angry king who, if he does not get his way, destroys his own people and burns their cities, simply does not fit the God revealed by Jesus throughout the four Gospels. But this is a parable of judgment. But it may not be the judgment we think it is. Speaking about the first group of guests, the king says, those invited were not worthy. By implication, those in the second invited group were worthy. We tend to get nervous and fearful when God begins making judgments. It leaves us wondering whether we are in the first group or the second group? Are we unworthy or are we worthy? I suspect our nervousness and fear about God's judgments arise from the assumption that God judges us in the same way we so often judge others. More often than not, our judgments of others are judgments of exclusion. What if it's just the opposite with God? What if Jesus is trying to shock us into seeing that the kingdom of heaven is not business as usual according to our standards? What if God's judgment on our lives is one of grace, acceptance, and invitation, a judgment of inclusion? If that's true, then what separates or distinguishes the first invited guest from the second? The difference is not that one was more deserving than the other. The first invited guests, guests were recipients of King's invitation and favor, but so were the second invited guests. And so was the man who showed up without a wedding robe. They were all invited. They were all favored. None of them had done anything to earn or deserve an invitation. It was just given. And if that's true for them, it is true for us. The difference is not that the king likes one group more than the other group. His sole motivation is to share his banquet. He wants someone, anyone, everyone to join in his joy and celebration and be a part of his kingdom. Both groups were given the same opportunity. If that's true for them, it is true for us. The difference is not that some guests are good and others are bad. There is no distinction or judgment made 
based upon behavior, beliefs, attitudes, and morals to the contrary. With the second round of invitations, the king sends his servants into the main streets with the instruction to invite everyone you find. And they did. They went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. If that's true for them, it's true for us. And that's probably not the kind of social life most of us live. Offer to another or receive from another. But the parable here is talking about God's kingdom, not ours. So what is it? What is the difference between those who are not worthy and those who were? There's only one thing that distinguishes the first invited guest from the second invited guest. Presence. The second invited guest showed up. The first invited guest, they did not. The wedding hall was filled with the second invited guest, but the first invited guest would not come. That's the only difference between the two groups. The key to our life in God is to show up, to be present. That's a lot easier said than done because to be present is difficult work. Think how difficult it is to be present to another person. It means establishing the other person as our priority. It means seeing them for who they are and not who we want them to be or think they should be. It means opening ourselves to receive their life into our own. It means the vulnerability and trusting and giving our life to the other. It means really listening to what they say and not just what we hear or want to hear. It means letting go of our own agendas, distractions, fears, and prejudices. It means bringing and offering all that we are and all that we have. If we are not doing that with others, we are probably not doing it with God. Instead, we too often go our separate ways. We have to go to our farms. We have to go to our businesses. We are too busy. We're too tired, too distracted. There's work to be done and money to be made. We make light of the other's life and what is being offered. If we don't earn it or work for it, we assume it has no value. And after all, and after all, you get what you pay for, right? We are convinced we have better things to do and better places to be. That's what the first invited group did. What they did not realize and times do not realize is that there is no life outside the banquet. To show up and be present is to be worthy before God. But what about the guy who showed up without a wedding robe? This is more than, this is about more than a dress code violation. Something else was missing. He was speechless. It was as if he wasn't really there. Jesus is reminding us that there are times when we show up, but we are not really present. Our body is there, but we have left the room. So I wonder, 
What if this man had said something, anything? What if he had just made his presence known? Not so much to the king, but to himself. What if he just said, I was hungry, I smelled the food, and I trusted you to feed me. I was lonely, I saw the lights on, and I trusted you to take me in. I was thirsty, I knew there would be wine, so I trusted you to give me a drink. I was naked. I knew people would be well-dressed and I trusted you to clothe me. I was sad and grieving. I heard music and laughter and I trusted you to share your joy. I was empty. I saw abundance. I trusted you to fill me. I was dying. I saw the door was open and I trusted you to give me life. What if he had said any of those or a thousand other things like them? It would have been enough. He would have shown up with all that he was and all that he had. He would have been present. Then the king would have said to him, Oh, my dear friend, I'm so glad you got my invitation. I'm so glad you're here. Yes, my brothers and sisters, many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Amen.